Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dougal, the Nootropic Reviewer. Very excited to share some new research with Jinko Biloba during this video. There's a lot of questions around this nootropic supplement. A lot of people believe it's one of the most effective nootropics out there, specifically for improving memory and for boosting cognition. And then at the same time, we have a lot of people like myself that don't believe Ginkgo Biloba is all that effective. And that's been my experience with taking this nootropic supplement. And so I want to share this recent publication that was made. It's a meta-analysis of many different studies that were done to measure the effectiveness of Ginkgo Biloba. Were there adverse effects? Were there benefits? Was it useful for younger individuals, for elders? individuals for individuals that maybe have cognitive impairments. They say in general Ginkgo biloba is safe and well tolerated and the maximum recommended dose of Ginkgo biloba is 240 milligrams per day and some of the side effects include headaches, heart palpitations, gastrointestinal upset, constipation, and allergic skin reactions. And so the positive with Ginkgo biloba is for the individuals that don't seem to be healthy, regardless of what condition that they're under, Ginkgo biloba can not only be useful in actually restoring cognition, but also helping with other health markers. As shown with respect to dementia, a 52-week randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study did show that it appeared to stabilize and improve the cognition performance as well as social functioning of dementia patients for six months to a year. And they further say that a review of nine trials did conclude that 240 milligrams a day of a specific form of Ginkgo biloba was actually able to decelerate, decline in cognition, function, behavior, and global change at the 22 to 26 weeks in patients with dementia. However, it's important to note in the context of dementia or early Alzheimer's is that Ginkgo biloba did not actually help to uh, potentially prevent dementia happening. It was more like it was able to somewhat help with cognition after individuals had already realized that they had some sort of form of dementia. And the same thing applies with respect to cardiovascular risk, which is interesting because most people do look at Ginkgo biloba like a cognition booster, like a memory supplement, but now there's a lot of research showing that it can potentially be just as useful as your daily multivitamin. As shown in terms of preventing dementia, there is also insufficient evidence to support the use of Ginkgo. And then with cardiovascular disease, effects of Ginkgo on cardiovascular disease and risk factors, including hypertension and diabetes, have been the topic of many studies. However, there has been a lack of large evidence-based, well-designed, randomized, controlled trials slash studies to support its use in treating or preventing the incidence of cardiovascular disease. So this poses the question, what is Ginkgo biloba even good for? For individuals like yourself and me, we're healthy, we're looking to be more productive, is it going to give us an edge? If it's not good for potentially preventing or slowing down any potential diseases or health risks, then could it help us with cognition? Well, that's something which they did actually test in this recent study done over here. Although the study wasn't solely done on Ginkgo biloba, it was a mixture of Ginkgo biloba, sesame, and turmeric, which are all supposed to be good, healthy supplements, which should, uh, help with cognition to some extent. And it looks like one of the reasons why they use this specific mixture of Ginkgo biloba, sesame, and turmeric was because they actually use this mixture for mice and they saw really good results with respect to health and cognition. And so they figured, let's give it a shot with healthy adults. And so they took 159 participants that were aged 20 to 64 years old. And there were several measures in which they used in order to indicate whether or not the mixture was working. One being, for example, uh, the Weschler memory scale. They've also got the trial making test and the Stroop color and word test. And unfortunately, they didn't see any positive results with the healthy individuals in using Ginkgo biloba specifically for improving their memory. And further, healthy elder individuals showed no improvement in memory, but showed improvements in executive function after six weeks of administration. And so this research is obviously very disappointing, but it's not been a surprise for me. I've used a lot of different nootropics and I've never considered Ginkgo biloba to even be close to like my top 10 nootropics. I've not found it effective in boosting my memory. And then also through learning through this channel and learning from other great viewers, I've probably found like maybe 10% of individuals that use Ginkgo biloba do seem some sort of good benefits, but when they see benefits, they definitely are noticeable. And these individuals actually stick to Ginkgo biloba use long term. And that's because of the fact that nootropics are going to be highly variable for individuals. Of course, some nootropics are going to work really well for me. It doesn't mean that they're going to work very well for you, but I'm very fortunate to be pretty sensitive to nootropics. And I love the fact that Ginkgo biloba, it's seen as a considerably safe nootropic supplement. And they've actually previous found that about 2% of households do have Ginkgo biloba there. Although in the past, they've actually surveyed Ginkgo biloba 
Biloba users and they found that 50% of them were only taking it because their doctor had recommended that they use Ginkgo Biloba. Whether or not it was working, we'll never know. If you're unfamiliar with Ginkgo Biloba, it's a herbal supplement. It is not like a man-made nootropic supplement you should be somewhat concerned about. It's naturally occurring. That doesn't necessarily make it safe, but it's nice to know that this is actually a plant that's been grown. And the most helpful components of Ginkgo Biloba are the flavonoids. And the flavonoids are like antioxidants as well as terpenoids. And what these do potentially is improve circulation and help with brain health. And one of the reasons why Ginkgo Biloba may be recommended to individuals by their general practitioners is because Ginkgo Biloba actually helps to increase the levels of acetylcholine in the brain. And acetylcholine is responsible for so many different areas of cognition from executive function, learning, thinking, planning, hand-eye coordination. And so it's been believed that lower levels of acetylcholine in the brain can be potentially responsible for dementia. And this is a really positive study where individuals that were young, that were healthy, were ingesting 200 milligrams of Ginkgo Biloba prior to a cognitively demanding task. And it was shown to have benefits in improving short-term memory attention span, processing speed, and reaction time. However, looking at this graph over here, they actually did a survey about 400 participants, and they were surveyed on different nootropics and their potential effects. And look how low Ginkgo Biloba ranks as a nootropic for potentially improving focus. Something positive though about Ginkgo Biloba is that it can potentially increase dopamine levels. So when dopamine levels are higher, it means that we're more motivated. It means that we have a little bit more ambition when we wake up during the day. I've talked a little bit more about how to raise your dopamine levels in this video right over here. Super important, especially when you have lower dopamine levels, that's often going to be responsible for you having low energy, lack of ambition, and tiredness. But just how effective is Ginkgo Biloba going to be at improving mood and helping to reduce anxiety levels, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people do happen to use nootropic supplements. And there's actually a handful of studies where they have observed that there was a benefit of using Ginkgo Biloba for stress and anxiety. In one study, 170 people with general anxiety were either treated with 240 milligrams of Ginkgo biloba, 480 milligrams of Ginkgo, or a placebo. And the group that was treated with the highest dose of Ginkgo biloba, they actually reported a 45% reduction in the symptoms of anxiety compared to the placebo group. So this makes it a great option. Perhaps if you question your serotonin levels, maybe if you've tried lion's mane or some of the other great mood boosting nootropics and you've not seen good results with them, Ginkgo biloba may do something for you. And given that Ginkgo biloba is a very strong antioxidant, a lot of people are surprised to learn that there's a lot of health benefits with respect to inflammation, uh, vision. For some individuals, it's helped with sexual dysfunction, vertigo, premenstrual sickness, and the list goes on and on. And what I have found is like to really get the best use of Ginkgo Biloba for performance and for productivity, if you're somebody like myself who um, already has dialed down like their fitness, has dialed down their diet, and is just looking for that extra performance boost that they could potentially get from nootropics, that could potentially be accomplished by spacing out your Ginkgo Biloba use. So for example, if you have a very intense um, cognitively demanding task that you have that's coming up, then using a little bit of Ginkgo Biloba prior to that task may help you to improve your performance. So rather than taking like that serving size we've talked about, 240 milligrams just once, I would be taking it something like either 60 milligrams four times a day or what's maybe more practical is taking 120 milligrams twice a day. But given the fact that most people do use Ginkgo Biloba specifically for improving their memory, I really do feel like they might be better off trying Bacopa Mineri as a nootropic supplement instead because by taking 500 milligrams of Bacopa Mineri just once a day for two weeks straight, it's not been a little bit better than Ginkgo Biloba. It's been at least 10 times better. I'm able to recall things from the past. I'm able to learn at an accelerated rate. Like I wish I would have found this nootropic supplement back when I was in school. I've talked more about Bacopa in this video over here. And what are your thoughts on Ginkgo Biloba? Some people really find it effective. Some people wonder, what is it so hyped up for? Unfortunately, I fall in that category of individuals that really didn't find it too effective at all. Do subscribe and drop a like if you did get value from this video. If you'd like to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so over on Patreon. And be sure to visit our Discord server. We have a 24 7 chat room. We're answering questions in a time-sensitive fashion. I thank you for your interest in nootropics and look forward to seeing you next time.